Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be covering IUPAC nomenclature and we are going to be looking at metal ions, negative ions that contain metals as well as oxo anions. Now before we get into IUPAC nomenclature, you need to know what IUPAC is. Well, it's good to know what IUPAC is. So IUPAC is actually International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. It's an organization that is mainly responsible for nomenclature and terminology. That means they are responsible for setting a standard, a uniform, a standard name for everybody to use all around the world. And this is very important because when we mention chemicals in different languages and when we publish them in papers, everybody can understand what the other scientists is doing. Now before we get to IUPAC nomenclature, you need to be familiar with your Roman numerals. Roman numerals are just numbers, they're just written differently in Roman numerals. Okay, So for example, number one is written as, it looks like I for us. Okay, Number two is II, so you need to be familiar with these Roman numerals. The most commonly used one is uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, 5, 6, 7. So first, let's look at how to name metal ions, okay? So metals, so metals that have more than one oxidation number. If you haven't watched our video on oxidation number, the link is at the corner of the video. So for metals with several oxidation states, with metals that have several oxidation number, in both ionic and covalent compounds, here it doesn't matter whether it's ionic or covalent. If you watch oxidation uh, video on oxidation number, you know that we, it doesn't matter whether it's ionic or covalent, there is an oxidation number. So the Roman numeral is written in the bracket after the metal. So for example, iron. Iron is a metal that has several oxidation states. It's a few oxidation numbers. So if we are talking about iron with the oxidation state of plus 2, then you write iron 2 oxide. This is iron 2 oxide. If we are talking about iron with the oxidation state of plus 3, then we write iron 3 oxide. So this is for metals that have more than one oxidation number. So metals with only one oxidation number is very simple. We don't have to write the oxidation number in the bracket because we know they only exist as, they only have one oxidation state. Metals in group 1, 2 and 3 contain only one, have only one oxidation state and therefore there no need to write the Roman numerals in the bracket after the metal. For example, sodium chloride. Sodium is group 1. So we just write it as sodium chloride, no number in brackets. Barium iodide, barium is group 2. Aluminium nitrate, aluminium is group 3. None of them, we have to write the numer Roman numerals in the bracket. Now what about metals that have more than oxi one oxidation number, but instead of existing as the metal ion, they exist as this polyatomic ion, okay? And they exist as a negative ion. So if they are metal ions, all metal ions are positive, but metals can also exist in polyatomic ions that have a negative charge. So this is the same way as we calculate, this is how we calculate the oxidation number of manganese in this ion. Okay. So there are a few things that I want to note. First of all, when you see this, this is a manganate ion, MnO4. If you notice, most of the negative ions that contain oxygen have the suffix ATE, for example, sulfate, nitrate, uh, chlorate, manganate, chromate. So all these that have oxygen, they generally, this is not a hard and fast rule, just for you to notice something, generally they have oxygen mixed with the metal. Okay, so for this one, it is manganate. Manganate consists of manganese, and oxygen. So this ion consists of manganese and oxygen. It's called manganate. Now, we know that manganese is a transition metal. Manganese can exist and in several oxidation states. So it has several oxidation numbers. So in order to differentiate them, we have to include the Roman numeral in the bracket. So from this calculation, this calculation, I've shown this example in the video on oxidation numbers. So in this example, we have calculated the oxidation number of manganese to be plus 7. And so, this ion, this polyatomic ion is known as the manganate 7 ion. Because the, mang the oxidation number of manganese here is plus 7. 
So even in negative ions, if there are metals with more than one oxidation number, you have to write the, the oxidation state of the metal in Roman numerals in a bracket after the ion. Now this is also a manganate ion, but this time the charge is 2 minus. So when we calculate, we find the oxidation number of manganese in this manganate ion is plus 6. And therefore, this ion will be named as manganate bracket Roman numeral 6. So again, we have to include the oxidation number of the metal that has more than one oxidation number in the bracket in Roman numerals. Another example is chromate. So the oxidation number of chromium in this chromate ion, we can calculate it to be plus 6. And therefore, this chromate ion will be named chromate bracket 6. And this one is a dichromate ion. Di stands for 2. The prefix di is for 2. So dichromate, so because we have two chromium ions in this chromate ion. So a dichromate, we count the oxidation number of chromium here to be plus 6. And therefore, it is called dichromate 6 in Roman numerals in the bracket. This one is hexacyanoferrate. Hexa is a prefix for 6. Hexacyano, because there are 6 cyano groups, and ferrate, ferrate refers to the iron. So here, this is the exception. That's why I told you it's not a hard and fast rule. Although there's ATE at the back here, there's no oxygen here. Huh? So just generally, just for you to help you remember what it looks like. It is, does not apply to everything. Okay? Now the oxidation state of iron in this hexacyanoferrate, we can count it to be plus 2. And therefore, this ion is known as hexacyanoferrate bracket Roman numeral 2. So again, whenever we have a negative ion with a metal that has more than one oxidation number, then we must include the oxidation state, the oxidation number of the metal in the bracket in Roman numerals at the back of the ion. So for example, when we look at uh, dichromate, okay? so when we say uh, potassium dichromate, so the compound will be potassium dichromate 6. So the ion dichromate 6 is the ion at the back. Uh, for example, potassium manganate 7. So potassium manganate 7. Manganate 7 is the ion at the back. That's how we use it. So this is another example of hexacyanoferrate, but this time is 3 minus and we count the oxidation number of iron here to be plus 3. Therefore, it is hexacyanoferrate 3, Roman numeral 3 in the brackets. So now we move on to oxoanions. Now oxoanions are anions. Anions are negatively charged particles that has a combination of oxygen and a non-metal. So don't get confused with what we did before this. Before this, we have combination, neck is also an anion, it's a negative ion, but we have combination of oxygen and metal. So these are not oxoanions. Oxoanions are oxygen and non-metals. Okay? So here, the non-metal, if the non-metal has more than one oxidation number, then the same principle applies. We use Roman numerals in the bracket after the oxo anion. So for example, sodium sulfate. So in this compound, sodium sulfate, the sulfate here, the oxidation number of sulfur in the sulfate oxo anion is plus six. Okay, we can calculate it to be plus six. So therefore, the IUPAC name for sodium sulfate will be sodium sulfate bracket six, Roman numeral six. Okay, for this one, this is also SO, but this is SO3. So this is commonly known as sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide is not the IUPAC name. Sodium sulfide is the common name. So for the IUPAC name, we have to figure out the oxidation number of sulfur in this ion, in this oxo anion. So when we calculate, we can find it to be plus 4. And therefore, this is known as sodium sulfate 4. Its IUPAC name is sodium sulfate 4. So notice that normally when we say sodium sulfate, the common sodium sulfate, the common sulfate ion is SO4, 1 minus. Okay, however, uh, 2 minus, sorry. However, 
This is also sodium sulfate, but the oxidation number is stated at the back is 4. So this is sulfate 4 and this is sulfate 6. It depends on the oxidation number of sulfur. This is the IUPAC name. For the common name, sodium sulfate 6 is commonly known as sodium sulfate, but sodium sulfate 4 is known, known as sodium sulfite. This is the common name. Look at nitric acid. So this is very common, nitric acid. Very commonly used chemical in the labs. So oxidation number of nitrogen here, when we calculate, can be found to be plus 5. And therefore, this is a nitric 5 acid. A nitric 5 acid. Not simply nitric acid. When we compare to HNO2, the common name for HNO2 is nitrous acid. However, when we use IUPAC nomenclature, we need to figure out the oxidation number of nitrogen in this oxo anion. In the, this oxo anion. So we find it to be plus 3. And therefore, this is called nitric 3 acid because the oxidation number of nitrogen here is plus 3. That is all for this video. I hope you've learned something today. And if you have, please hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next video.